got your backup? You got your yeah, I got... Well, last time this just literally shut off on me. Uh, it wasn't even a battery problem. So that was a problem. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm like, that. now it, it just happens. Like something gets fried, you know, and <laughs> that was it. Well, so so it was all from the memory that cassette decks, ka oh, you know, God. Well, at least those would roll and you'd know when it would stop or pop, you know. Right, right. These, these can be tricky. Good, but tricky at the same yeah, time. Yeah. You know, the first impression I had of the movie was how it popped. Like, in a sense, there's... It's so fast-paced, and there's so much going on, and there's so much like action in a, in a sense in this movie. Um, were you guys going for that feel where we're always you need to stay engaged because there's something coming at you constantly? Well, the goal wasn't to be frenetic. I mean, we we really paced out the movie so it would have these moments of action. And when you yeah. launch the movie, you want to kind of get into it. Yeah, and, and then. You know, we tried to modulate in a way so then when we go to our title sequence where the baby's being born, it takes its time to breeze, mm -hmm. cheek to cheek. Yeah. You know, so we were really trying to modulate it, you know, as opposed to just being a frenetic super pace and then really slow down at the end. Mm -hmm. You know, the movie when it, you know, it gets, you know, our goal is to be more emotional with it. But we had fun, like the action sequences, like in the backyard when they're chasing the tape. Right. We looked at a lot of Michael Bay films and actually just like tried to capture that. Michael Bay for kids, kind of like it was supposed to be really crazy, you know. Until we cut to the parents' point of view, then you stop. Mm -hmm. and you see the little car go by, you know. So everything it's, stops at the parents' point of view. It's like this slow mo type of point where they just can't keep up with the with the stuff in the kids' lives, pretty much in that sense. Yeah, so you try and pace it so that it modulates. Mm -hmm. you know? and, uh, but the goal wasn't just to do a frenetic. Hey, let's just throw everything at. No, I think it had some peaks and valleys too, and it had those soft moments when you need it, you know, when those intimate moments definitely still carry through within the action, you know, like the moments of kind of self-realization and the connection between them, you know, it's like, kind of like just stops everything, it just goes, goes, and then stops, you know, and I felt like those were the good times to, to exactly focus in on oh, that. Good, good, good. Uh, another thing was, I don't know if it was me, Towards the end sequence, um, when and Tim's kind of like, because he's got a crazy imagination, uh, but I for a second thought, was he thinking that, that actually the baby boss had died for a second? Like, I got this impression uh, towards the end that, oh, when he's, when he's sleeping, kind of waking up, that uh, with the whole kind of theme of heaven and where the babies come from, I had a uh, feeling that, wow, did boss baby actually die and it really kind of hit me and it affected oh, me. Oh wow, that's an interesting one. Yeah, because it, it was that sense where he's like going away and you know, they, they set it, the setup is like, he's leaving and Tim kind of wakes up and he's so depressed in the morning, you know, and I was thinking like, was this kind of like a dream sequence almost, and it Chris Nolan in, in a way, like that, that, that the baby almost pass away and that he's having this regret and almost taking it back that I wish I wasn't a bad person. It was like this self-realization thing, like, oh, I need to be more accepting. It, it was like a message towards a uh, type of thing where he self-realized. At least that's how I took it for a second. No, it's interesting that you um, that place. That exactly. he had died and gone to heaven in that I way. I thought about it. I mean, mm -hmm. there is a little bit of inception for kids in this, you know? Yeah, the, the, I and, felt that. And, but, um, you know, uh, for us, I think a little bit of it, without spoiling the movie, mm -hmm. you know, he, uh, the parents put him to bed and they say, how would you like to have a baby brother? And he goes, no thanks, I'm enough. And you know, we open the, sh open the scene and there's actually vignettes of all the, s the set pieces in the movie at the beginning of the movie. All those toys are laid out in the same mm -hmm. order that the movie is. And so the idea was being like, he goes to bed and he has this kind of fever dream. Where do you babies come from? And then the whole thing is like him rationaling, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, rationalizing what it means to have a baby brother. And right. so at the end, when he wakes up again, it's kind of very similar. The train starts again, and it's like he had this fever dream where he, he learned to accept his brother. He kind of worked it out in his imagination. And so it's kind of almost like the same day, but now he loves his brother. And he can't that appreciation. That you would, yeah, yeah, but I thought about, especially with the heaven thing, kind of like where it starts off the movie with like the babies kind of come from up above and the heaven. It almost felt like, wow, there's this like, potentially you can take away this deep, real 
meaning to it that like wow if i don't appreciate it you can lose him and what if he never like i almost thought this for a second what if he never was born and that was just like an image that he had or like a dream because he's very like imaginative throughout the movie he visualizes things from the get-go you know he's always pretending so almost like he envisioned like what would be life with a baby and then if it lost or like died or potentially the parents never had it you know that type of moment where it would really strike him that was more of the idea, mm -hmm. I think, like, what if his brother had never been born? Mm -hmm. You know, in the logic of our movie, you yeah. know, he was there, and then he actually went back to Baby Corps, and then Baby Hazmat Babies took it all away, and then yeah. it's really like he just, he fell in love with his brother, and then he just really missed him. So, mm -hmm. he, you know, it was more, more of a lament that way, I think, was yeah. the intention. I still think there's a message to take away, obviously, yeah. you know, for sure. Yeah. Uh, for that's fine, too. Was it any different, because you've directed Madagascar movies, and, and those are animal characters, was it different kind of to veer off to more human characters? Uh, was there a different approach for you to, to go with human characters? Because obviously the animals, they have, uh, uh, you know, there's there's heart in it too, but it's a little bit different when you're projecting human characters. I mean, characters are characters. They can mm -hmm. be talking animals or they could be babies. The, the main thing is like, you know, important thing is, and I had done uh, human characters in Megamind. Mm -hmm, right. And so, you know, and I, I, you know, to me, doing human characters is, is always good. It's always challenging to make them appealing in an animated film. But um, it just felt like this story, uh, and because it's told to a seven-year-old's imagination, was just a great way to express it through animation. You know what I mean? It's a mm -hmm. perfect story to do animation. So. Human characters, animal characters, it could be a talking teapot, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? As long as it's, the, you know, you're trying to uh, define characters and make new characters that are interesting. And, you know, really what kind of made Boss Baby pop as a character was as soon as we got Alec. Mm -hmm. You know right. what I mean? Just, and so, so much not just anyone it. could, uh, you know, no. it's like he was central to this in, in creating this central character, Boss Baby, you know what I mean? And, and so, you know, he, as an actor, he brought so much to the character in, you know, and how it was going to perform, how it was going to act. And so, mm -hmm. you know, the main thing was really, you know, whether it's an animal or a baby or anything. And um, actually, my first animated film at CalArts had a baby in it. I have a thing <laughs> for babies. I think. And so, um, so the goal is, is to, and if we're successful, it just invents a character that people can relate to and fall in love with or that sort of thing, or be entertained with. Absolutely. And as far as parents, I mean, you guys are parents too. Uh, so how does it like feel, as from a parent's perspective, uh, to see the movie and kind of go through the story, to see it from a, from a child, you know, because at some point, I mean, you know, you guys probably had kids that were, you know, seven, eight years old, like Tim's age. So um, how is that from a parent's perspective, kind of looking at it? Well, I've known Tom for 20 years, mm -hmm. and we've always wanted to work together. And about three and a half years ago, he sent me the script for Boss Baby. And I read it, and I literally thought it was a mirror of my own life because wow. I have a seven-year-old. I mean, I have three children, mm -hmm. and my first child was seven when my second son, second child arrived, and he was really jealous, just like Tim Templeton. So I was really connected to the emotional core of the script, and you know, these two characters falling in love with one another and mm -hmm. finding the the value of family in the end, and um, and was really you know brought to tears when when Tom shared with me his personal story as well, um, you know, about your brother. Yeah, I came out from the brother's point of view, because I had a brother very similar. And mm -hmm. that's, uh, you know, as far as character arcs go, two kids that are antagonistic or hate each other, grow to love each other, that's the strongest and most simple arc. And that's what happens with family a lot. That's what happened to me and my brother. We're, we're you know, closer now than ever now. Did go through war, and, you know. So, it's related so I, I came at it from the mother, came at it from the mother, in a, in a way, and uh, and that was a goal too to like just have it in for as many people as we could. Whether you have a sibling or you're a parent or you have a horrible boss at work, which we've all had. There's a saying like, if you don't have a horrible, if you don't hate your boss, you're either unemployed or uh, or uh, <laughs> it's probably one of them. Demented, abused. Um, 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 yeah, so uh, it is like, I, I haven't birthed a child, you have, but when you work like six years on a movie with 400 people and then you finally put that in the world, it's like, you hope you raised it right. Yeah, so people it's like your it, baby. You know, yeah. well, it was a, a, this emotional core, mm -hmm. um, this, this, this uh, emotional 
emotion, this message of the movie is really resonating with everyone. Yeah. And it was, it's something that you can't make up, but it really inspired all of us. Yeah, no one phoned it in any, in any way, you know. And the thing about, the goal specifically for me, you know, having done the Madagascar films, which mm -hmm. were really fun, and they're more cartoony kind of yeah, comedy yeah. gag, exactly. but you could never, there's so many characters you could never devote it to something a little deeper and a little more resonant as far as like a relationship story, you know, that you go. And so by design, it was really central to have two characters. Remember Midnight Run? Did you ever see Midnight with Charles Grodin and uh, Robert De Niro? Oh, it's a classic, but I it's think I know what you're talking about. But, you know, it's mm -hmm. not too dissimilar from that. You mm -hmm. really, the goal was, so at the end of this movie, go like, no, you guys can't leave each other. You shouldn't mm -hmm. leave each other. So, you know, we really devoted as much screen time as possible to this, these two brothers. You know, and the baby being the adult in their relationship. Sure. So, so that was a goal from the onset, really, you know, and then to try and, like, have a little bit of heart in there, you know, uh, because most people, it's pretty universal family. Sure. Siblings. You guys ready for a couple quick rapid fire questions? Yeah, go. Some fun ones? Okay. Um, who's got a wilder imagination? If any of you can answer this. Uh, Boss Baby or Tom? <laughs> Tom has a wild imagination yeah. for sure. Boss Baby's all business. Yeah. Well, that's the fun part. The kid, that's the, the two-hander, you know, the kid got to teach Boss Baby to use his imagination because he felt bad for him. He never had a child. Mm -hmm. And that was specific to the story. Did you meet Tom or Tim? Uh, Tom, you met Tom as a... Yeah, well, yeah, Tim actually, too. I mean, Boss Baby's got a crazy imagination, too. Another question would be, best hair, Tim, Boss Baby, Tom, or Ramsey? Hey, me. <laughs> I'd say in the room, it's probably you. <laughs> well, <good>. maybe. Yes. <laughs> Although, I, I, I said a few weeks ago that my hair was murdered, so now it's grown back, so I had a funeral for my hair, because they totally butchered my hair last time. I say but Tim, now it's better. I Tim's got Tim. great hair. Tim's I just love the flow hair, of it. And it was hard to do, and we spent years figuring out that hair. And, and it looks like mom's over. hair, too. I've noticed that. He's mom's? got this hair color and style, almost, in yeah. a sense, like, to the side. We spent a long time with mom's hair, too. Yeah, yeah, hair's hard. Cool. Hair's always kind of hard. Like, but there's a reason mom has her hair up all the time because we, you know, sure. you know, doing hair is, is actually difficult, especially when it moves and it's bouncing and, 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 and it's, you know, so it doesn't look like this hairspray thing and and um, and to turn it around so it looked good from every angle, it really there's a lot of math involved yeah. in a computer animated film, you know, in a way, and so that was one of our challenges. That was a challenge, and baby jewel mm -hmm. it was very challenging to kind of get right, you know what I mean? Because we don't do it that often. And final question, was there any chance, since Boss Baby's got green eyes and Tim's got blue and he really resembles mom, is there any chance something crazy could have happened where they were not actual brothers because they that don't, was, and he's got blonde hair too. That's and, the joke. I think that's yeah. the joke is like sometimes you look around at your family and they're alien to you. Yeah. And we really wanted to make him alien uh, to the kid, so he kind of popped, you know. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, a lot of kids do have like different hair color, but as I grow up, all of a sudden, it's changed. you probably had light hair when you were a baby. Yeah, I did, actually. And so, yeah. you know, it's interesting how it, it kind of evolved. We made his eyes green like money, because he throws money around <laughs> a lot. Good and point. It just felt like, ah, oh, that's the right color for him. Good know? point. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. I really enjoyed the film. I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, fun, and it was very kind of, for me, it was like original and unique. In a sense, you don't see these kind of characters of a baby the way it was just done. Uh, oh, it's good. original concept. For uh, that was my reaction, and I just had fun with it. You know, oh, this good. is a great watch, fun watch. And it, for me, I felt it appeals to a mass audience. I think parents can like it, kids can like it, teens can like it. There's there's everyone that's been through that stage in a sense that can relate to it and it will take it in differently. Oh, you know? Let's hope so. Yeah, that's yeah. cool.